retain the importance of today? Absolutely crucially important and um, I think the people that we really want to acknowledge who's made today happen were the families and are the families of those people who are trying their best to get justice, the families of those who've been affected by state violence. I took a delegation to Europe in January of this year and anyone who was in the room and they spoke to a number of MEPs could not have been but moved by the extent of pain and suffering that these families have been put through, not alone over the death of their loved one, but the way that they have been treated in their trying to get inquest and justice and truth recovery. And after that delegation, or at that delegation, I pledged to those families that as, that as Sinn Féin MEP, that I would work very, very hard to assist them to get Article 2 complied with, which is the right to life, and with the right to life becomes the right to responsibility and that you have to be protected under the law. And so one of the things that we did uh, was to arrange a meeting with the Commissioner here, Commissioner Muzniak in Strasbourg, and myself, and I worked with Relatives for Justice, the Pat Finucane Centre, and Neil, Neil Murphy, one of the solicitors, went to meet directly with him in Strasbourg and we talked to him about a number of issues. We spoke to him about the way the families, only 11 of the families from the 82 uh, families who are trying to get inquests on legacy cases um, have, ha have had inquests and what has been the consequence for those families who have been desperately trying to get access to documentation and inquests and the coroner trying to get the PSNI even to disclose to them what, what he needs in order to do his case and take those cases forward. Hence the importance of this conference that this commissioner who took time out of his schedule as a consequence of the meeting that we had with him to be here to listen and to learn and I think all of that what it gives for me is an opportunity to demonstrate to the families of state finance that Sinn Féin will do all in our powers to help them and that it's an opportunity for the families to at least glean a glimmer of hope knowing that on an international stage that someone is listening someone here is to learn and who will return and hopefully as a consequence of all of that that they will get the justice that they are entitled to and deserve. Well, I think this is a debate that has been raging over many years about the need for the British government to face up to Article 2 compliance. And I think the fact that we've had now for the first time a commissioner of such importance dealing with the issue of human rights, that places a big focus on the issue, but also a huge responsibility on the British government to face up to the delaying tactics that they have been involved in, whether it be through the coroner's courts or other investigations, through, uh, such as the Ombudsman, for example. And I think in the course of the contribution made today by the Commissioner, he rightly identified uh, the need to end the starvation of these important investigative bodies by the British Government. And he pointed out very clearly that the responsibility for what happened during the course of the Troubles in terms of investigating the activities of state agencies uh, rests clearly with Westminster who have a responsibility to fund uh, these important investigations so that people who are seeking the truth can get the truth at long last. I think it's very, very important that relatives' voices are heard, particularly at conferences like this, uh, like this as well. But I think it's more important to having worked with relatives for a long time and having, you know, um, recently worked with them also and speaking with them. That what we need really is a, a comprehensive package of measures to deal with the past. We had that, um, we believe, last year in the Haas proposals, which was a compromise position for for everyone. Um, everybody didn't get what they wanted out of it, but the, in terms of dealing with the past. There was a mechanism there would actually give people the truth and the justice that they that they they need for closure, and I think that really we need to get back around the, you know to to getting those proposals um, brought forward in, in that way so we can get down to dealing with the legacy of the past. Commissioner, why are you in Belfast and what's your message to conference? I'm here to 
learn, to learn first of all about what is going on here and about the, the, the human rights issues that are topical in Northern Ireland. Um, my message was that any transitional justice solution has to be in line with uh, the UK's obligations under the Euro European Convention. In other words, there can be no impunity. Uh, but I've learned some interesting things today that, uh, for example, on amnesties, that amnesties are not completely inconceivable uh, under certain very specific conditions in the context of a broader reconciliation process, context of a broader uh, uh, truth-seeking process. Uh, my message is also you have to move forward. These issues will not disappear if you don't address them. Um, I think the UK government has to play an active role in this process. It cannot say, well, this is a devolved responsibility. Uh, Northern Ireland Assembly must deal with it. I think the UK, the UK government has to come and say what, it is, what its preferred solution is and to use the levers it has to try to push the various sides to some kind of conclusion. It also has obligations under the European Convention. It also has funding obligations under the European Convention. Uh, so I don't think it can wash its hands of, of the matter and leave it to, to the local politicians. Of course, many families from both sides of the conflict here today, how have you responded to their heartfelt cries and pleas for some movement? Well, I think it's it re reinforces the need uh, to move forward and to, to actually do something because these people are in pain. Uh, the, 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 the delays, the, the obstruction, uh, the excuses about lack of money, this, these are all unacceptable to, to the victims' families. They need some kind of, uh, some kind of closure on, on the fate of their loved ones. Um, and, and I think they deserve it. And, and they will not give up, and I think they shouldn't give up. And I think the, that the, the government until now has failed them. I think we can't overstate the importance of having the Commissioner here today. We have a number of families who are sitting in that room whose cases are sitting at Europe or are being prepared to go to Europe because they haven't been investigated for over 20 to 30 years. They're sitting there with their hopes pinned on what the legal system could deliver to them if it was human rights compliant. So having a human rights Commissioner here to explain how it could be human rights compliant is so important. When the Commissioner got up and spoke about the UK government not being able to devolve its responsibility for violations that they were responsible for during direct rule was very important for families because there is an attempt to try and shift the blame onto the Stormont executive. Equally, when he talked about resourcing, that the UK government holds the, um, the responsibility for giving resources to independent mechanisms of investigation, such as the police ombudsman. Again, that was so important for families who are sitting having their investigations suspended, whether it's through the ombudsman, whether if there's been a suspension with um, police investigations uh, through the HET or whether or a, an overall lack of independent investigation for, um, for, for violations or whether it's the inquest system where there has been a systemic form of delay in providing information. He very clearly said that there needs to be compliance and that responsibility lies with the British government and not with the Stormont executive. That was so important for families because that's where they see the violation occurring. That's who they see as having the responsibility. So I think that having it here today, having someone with that kind of level of importance, independence and a fresh view was so important for us all in society. Having a room that's packed with families, with practitioners, with NGOs, with politicians and the Deputy First Minister, I think it really brings a whole weight to the argument for human rights and a human rights approach to these issues rather than it being a political negotiation. I think today shows what one MEP could do. Martina Anderson went and knocked on that door and brought this man here and that changed the mood music. If it was a government who was doing it on behalf of their citizens, things could change. Paul O'Connor, the importance of today and what the Pat Finnegan Centre is hoping to get out of it. Well, we're hoping to learn from their national experience, from the other practitioners, the other NGOs. I think what we've already learned from the European Commission are two very significant issues. One is that even if Britain pulls out of Europe, they're still liable for past violations. And I think that will be a revelation for UKIP and the right-wing Tories who want to pull out. That's, that's very revealing. The other issue is that he made clear that the UK cannot uh, derogate 
its responsibility to deal with the past to the regional uh, parliament in Stormont. And we've said from the very beginning, and other NGOs have said the same, these issues of dealing with the past need to be financed from the British Treasury and not through the block grant.